Let's create a 16-bit adder as illustrated in chapter two. Okay, so first thing we need is to pull in both the half and the full adder that we built in prior videos. Okay, so the 16-bit adder has a bus, 16-bit bus, that is uh, part of the input and the output. So a pin of a bit width of 16. Uh, if I hit enter, there we go. So there's our 16 bits. This would presumably be the A and then there would be a B, but you, so th there's going to be a series in order to, to uh, make this a 16 bit adder, you're gonna have to start with bit zero with a half adder and then cascade that into bit one with a full adder, bit two, bit three, et cetera. So those are gonna be cascade where the, the carry out from one goes into the carry in of the next one and so forth. But you need to be able to break this bus up into individual bits and the way that that's done is with a splitter. So in this case, the bit within is going to be 16 bits, right? Because that's going to be coming in from this pin, quote unquote. Uh, but the fan out is also going to be 16 because we're going to fan out into 16 individual bits. And so um, I did, I pre-did this because this is going to be kind of messy. So I wanted to get the best representation of this with the least crossing wires and so forth. And I found that a spacing of five works pretty well with this. So uh, this is going to be the A side of the adder. because there's, there's an A and a B and then an out. So I'll make this the A side and I'll put another splitter in here. And uh, again, that needs to be a bit width of 16. This is going to be the B side. Again, on a fan out of 16 with a spacing of five again. And we need to flip this around. I don't know why. Oh, let's see. Oh, because it needs to be right-handed. And yeah, something like that. And we'll put the bit, uh, the bits out there in a little bit, but for now let's work on putting the half adders out there. Right, so there's a half adder, and let me put a full adder out there to make sure that I have the spacing right. Yeah, I think that's correct. Okay, so let's wire these up. So on the half adder side, this should be A, and this is B, which is right. So uh, there's the A side, and then here comes the B side. Yeah. Probably something like this. Right, and then we need, so this is gonna be the output of the zero bit, and we need another splitter But then we want to flip it. Oh yeah, we want to flip it to be facing that way, right? And we uh, also want the spacing to be five to make it even. So right. Uh, 
Okay, so that's the first half adder. The carry needs to be taken care of, but we'll do that in a second. Let's go ahead and wire up bit one's full adder. Mostly just to make sure I have all this spacing to where it looks like it's going to work. I think it's going to. So again, this is the A side of the full adder and the B side coming from the B bus or the B pin input, I should say. And then we have uh, the sum, which should be that one. Coming something like that. And then this is the carry out from the half adder. So that carry out needs to come over to the carry in on this side. So there's the A input. And there's the B input. And then here comes the output. And then the carry. All right, so I will continue. This is monotonous. There's no reason to show the video for all this, but I will continue to, to do this, and then I'll be back uh, to be able to hook up the rest of these components. Okay, I'm back now. I've got the mundane cascading work of this done. And again, um, the A side and the B side of each one of the adders is connected respectively to the A bus and the B bus. And then the output side, this is the output bus, is connected to each one of the sum pins. And then the carry uh, output cascades into the carry input of the subsequent full adder. And that's done for all 16 bits. So what we need to do now is put the pins in for each one of the buses. Maybe the bus is not the right term, but. So here's our A and it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be an input and it's gonna be 16 data bits wide. And then we need a B pin. Sixteen data bits, and um, I guess we'll do it. Sure, we'll do it that way. And so now we need output pins over here. Mm, changing it to an output this time, and uh, I guess we want it facing west. And then the label will be out. How about O? Oh, it likes O. Oh. And I could have sworn I changed the bit width, but maybe I got distracted. Okay. So yes, output, 16 bits. The label is O for output, which kind of sucks. I was trying to keep this consistent. Yeah, doesn't like it. I was trying to keep this consistent with uh, what the book had, but that's okay. Okay, so 
Uh, this should be, this should be done. So now let's create a user interface and, um, I forgot to change the name of this. So let me go ahead and rename this. This is going to be our, uh, add 16. And then we want an add 16 UI to set as the main circuit. Okay. So the 16 UI, add 16 UI needs um, some dip switches for the A input. In this case now, we actually want 16 of them since this is 16-bit adder. And um, yeah, let's blow this up, make this a little easier to see. We'll call this A. We may flip it on its side. I'm not sure. Let me see how the spacing is going to work out. So here's, here's B, 16 wide again. And I think you have to set the labels because when you synthesize this, HTML is going to require these things to be named. Okay, so there's A and B. Now we want outputs uh, and we want, um, let's make an LED bar because we want 16 of them. So we'll stick those over here maybe. And um, we need 16 of these. And uh, we'll call this O for output. And then we need, obviously, our device under test. Okay, so what I've noticed right away is um, a splitter is going to be needed to split the bus, which is combined here into each one of these individual pins. So let's put the splitter. And again, our fan out is going to be 16 and the bit width is going to be 16. And we want to rotate this thing pointing down. Yeah, and this is right, I guess, because this will be bit zero and this will be bit 15, according to what, you know, like what the fan out says, even though the labels on the switch are obviously wrong. Yeah, that should work fine. Uh, let me zoom in. It makes it easier for me to connect these things up. So I have the mundane stuff over and and actually it turned out to be easier. Uh, FYI, if you just insert a splitter, and of course it's facing south, uh, and, and you make the spacing the same as your switches. And so if you just drop the splitter right on top of where the dots are, they automatically uh, form junctions. So that makes it super easy as opposed to what I was doing, which is connecting them all, which is mundane and slow. Okay, so let's hook up our inputs and output buses, if you will. I think they're called wire bundles in Logisim speak. All right, now in theory, this should work. Let me shrink this, shrink this down, it's down here. Yeah. Okay, so let's do some addition. Need to select that, let's do some addition. Okay, 
So that's one plus zero. One plus one is indeed two. Uh, this is looking promising. So one plus three. This is the ones, this is the twos. So this should be three. Plus one should be four. So that's zero. Two, four. I figured out the bug that was causing sporadic errors where I knew I really didn't have any logic problems in uh, in my designs. And so I wanted to take the sidebar to explain it because it, it occurred several in several places in several subsequent videos if you're watching the series. Uh, I'm not going to go try to explain them. I'm cutting them out because I'm in the editing process of a number of the videos that I've recorded. But I wanted to take a sidebar to explain the bug because it's a little strange and you may encounter it. Um, I'm running version 3.8 of Logisim. Um, I've reported the issue. I've given steps to repro to the maintainers. And I mean, if I have a chance, I may go out and just try to fix it myself and submit it to them. Uh, but I wanted to explain it carefully because if you encounter it, it, it really uh, messes you up and causes a lot of heartache. And this really is a very good product. Uh, and so, you know, it, there's no reason why you should be plagued with this bug, uh, you know, because almost every other thing I've done in here just works great. So what I have is a new design open. I'm going to create a design called chi um, child lib with a circuit called child. I'm just going to put a simple, just a simple design in here. I'm going to stick a gate. Couple of pins. Quick and dirty, it doesn't matter where they go. All right, and I'm going to save this project. So I'll call it child lib. Now create a parent circuit. I will add in the child that we just created. Okay, now notice the appearance is Logisim Evolution. Because when I created the child, uh, I didn't, remember, I didn't mess with the appearance. I just uh, put the end gate in there and saved it. So I'm going to change the appearance here to classic. And, you know, this is behavior that I did in, you know, we're working on the adder. Uh, and so and this is, you know, similar behavior where the um, a full adder, half adder I added or whatever. I, I did, you know, th this similar kind of behavior where I would do a design and I would pull it in and I didn't want the, um, trying to talk and draw at the same time. I didn't want the big I didn't want the big representation in my designs because it was cluttering stuff up. Uh, and I forgot to change the output this to an output pin. Please ignore that. It, it's it's not relevant for the discussion. So, but I'm going to put I'm going to I'm going to hook up three pins. Okay, and I'm going to now save, um, so I'm going to save this. So I'm going to save this as parent lib. And I'm going to, I'm going to close this. And I'm going to reopen parent lib. And you'll notice 
that the child is now back to logism evolution, the, the, the big representation and all of the, or rather some, I guess I, I should say, some of the pins are disconnected. Now, sometimes, depending upon the position of your, of your wires and, uh, and the sub-circuit, they may all be disconnected or some of them may be disconnected. And so you get very strange behavior where, uh, you know, maybe nothing works or some things work or partially works. And that's because it just depends on where in the circuit it is, whether or not uh, they get reconnected when it's, when it's reloaded. And the bug is, the bug is if your child design, so your so the child design is set to logism evolution, right? However, inside the parent, so when we, so let me close this. I'm going to open the parent. M remember, in the parent, we picked uh, of the, the we picked the representation of this to be the classic design. But because the child has the appearance of logism evolution, uh, it, it, evidently, when the parent is saved. It's not saving the state that you changed it to. So if we change the child to classic, see, now it's fixed, and we save it. And we close this, and we try to reopen the parent again, it's going to be broken again. See, now it's broken. However, if we go change the child, and we change its, its overall design appearance, because we because we've clicked on the you know the child design and we change this to classic and we save this now we go back to the parent and you can see now the parent is correct so word of warning until this bug gets fixed probably not best to be changing the appearances of these components between parent and children. Now, I think if you just if you just change them in one design without there being this parent-child relationship, it's probably fine. But it, it in a parent-child type relationship, in the parent, the if you change it in the parent, you will it, it will not save your appearance. Uh, based upon, and it'll, it'll revert it back to whatever the appearance of the child is. That's basically the bug. So I, I want to take this little digression to kind of show you the problem. Uh, and that way, hopefully you'll avoid it uh, when you use Logisim. Now, what I'm not sure is, does this like re read the full adder? I'm guessing it probably does. So let's just... Let's just try this and see if this works now. Okay. And it's... Wait, is it? Let's see. So that's one and three, which should be four. Yeah, that's correct. The one's place, the two's place, the four's place. Yes, that did fix the problem. So this should be three plus three is six. So that's four plus two, which is six. Yes, yeah, so... We now have a working adder. Thanks for watching.